Um, okay, uh, I think we're no fair to start, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll kick off. Um, so, hey everyone, good morning. Uh, my name is Daniel Kavanagh. Uh, I'm the manager in the OECC. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, I was a bit early, but uh, the earlier the better. It won't take too long, maybe an hour at uh, most. You know, this is this is it won't be too much in this. Most a lot of you might um, a lot of you might know most of it. You might not know some of it. It might be beneficial for you in some way. You know. Um, just to give you some context uh, around the OECC. Um, so um, as I said, I'm the manager. Uh, the main function of us is that we act as the middleman between the operator and fixed access operations, okay, so FAO, for both false um, repairs and delivery. Um, we're a very small team, but we're in the middle of wholesale, um, and we handle a very large amount of queries, so this training has been sort of tailored so you, so, uh, to show you what we can do or what we do and help you identify when to come to us for assistance and, and things like that using the escalation matrix. Um, and placing sort of basic orders, finding out how to find things out about the customer, things like that before coming to us. So, so to put in perspective, you know, we process or see every single order that goes into into the access network for delivery. You know, thousands of orders a month, rain, sun, or snow. So that and us managing that screen, every single fault that that every one of our 40 plus operators log on the UG is a big operation for a small team, you know. And um, our operation is broken into four or five smaller teams who all have their own roles in, as teams, as individuals, and then as a the wider group roles as well that we have that we're involved with with different different uh, market units and different parts of the organization and downstream and FAO and, and things like that. <laughs> so <clears throat> just getting into the training. And um, please, uh, can I ask you if you turn off your mic and your webcam because this is being recorded and um, there'll be time at the end for questions. Um, I'd like you to ask questions if you have them um, on anything that I'm covering for the next hour or so. All right. So uh, you can also type your questions in the text box in the bottom right. Or if you're more comfortable afterwards, you can email me the questions or anything like that um, and we'll answer them for you if, if you're more comfortable. Uh, so following on from that session where we gave a, a broad detail on, on a lot of subjects, um, this is a this is a tighter deck about the topics that you re requested more information on. So for those of you who are on yesterday's false call, this is a, a lot less technical and is a, a bit more a bit more of a how-to guide based on orders rather than rather than assurance and reading false information and things like that. So uh, the recording will be going onto our YouTube channel afterwards. So I might break it into two videos, depending on depending on how long it is. Um, it will just be a good way for you to refer back to if you ever need to, or if you're training new agents and things like that, all that sort of stuff. Um, and we're also planning on on uploading lots and lots of small how-to videos. This is just just so you know how to use AI, how to place orders, how to how to search for things in the UG, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it'll be handy for you if you ever if you ever need to use it. You might not need to use it, hopefully not, but if you do, uh, it will be there. So just about uh, what we'll be covering. Um, so we'll be going over the structure of the OECC. OECC, I've said that. Uh, but we'll also be touching our escalation matrix. So this will give you an idea of who to contact, uh, when to contact them, and and things like that, and what type of issues these people do on the escalation matrix. Um, we also look at how AI works because we've got a lot of questions about uh, different ways to find their codes and, and things like that, find their keys, that sort of situation in in the UG GUI. Um, it will be it will be fairly basic, but it will give you screenshots of everything you need to know uh, to go back and search uh, AI and search for addresses, and that will lead into lead into part two, which will be which will be prequel. Um, that's you know we find out how to place a prequel, how to read the results, how to request prequel updates from us, um, if one is needed, things like that. Um, and we'll also be touching on MBI as well uh, for those of you who resell MBI um, from from Opener as an RSP. Um, we will then look at the new tenant process, uh, what it is. If we got a, we got a lot of we get a lot of questions about this. Um, so what it is, how to use it, what's the email address, that sort of stuff. We actually covered it and we we covered the new tenant process for operators. 
Um, and we also cover credit management and we touch on that as well. It's a similar, very similar process to new tenant to, to new tenant, but it's a bit tighter. And there's different provisos around it. So you have to have different, you have to be, the account has to be in a specific state before you can request a credit management request. I'll touch on that at the end. Those two, sections four and five are a bit text heavy. Um, it's the only way to do it, but it'll be good to refer back to it again. Uh, so in sections one, two, and three are more, are more visual guides just to, just to, just to have a look at so you can use it as you go. And um, so starting on the, uh, matrix and the escalation structure, or the, the OECC structure and the escalation matrix, all right? So as you can see uh, on the chart there, um, on the manager, there are a few different teams in TLs who report into me. Um, it's important to know that we do not handle non-standard orders, okay? So um, there's two different types of orders and faults, non-standard and standard. So standard being, you know, it goes out, happy days, goes out straight for delivery, no issues. Non-standard being things like Direct buried leads, you know, blockages, works orders, trees on public property, all that sort of stuff, you know, that's all handled by your customer success manager or your service fulfillment manager. And um, so, starting from the left hand side, there, <clears throat> first point of contact is the OECC email address and the phone number, um, which I'm sure you would all know. Yeah, um, so, um, the email team are managed by Mark Bulger on the right hand side there. Email queries are usually used for like pre call updates, requests for minor plant alterations, notifying us of how the of the owner of a CLI. So say for example, <coughs> we get married to, to Paula there and she changes her surname to Cavanagh, but she wants to keep her phone number and you place a CN, but we reject it because the surname's different. You notify us through email and of the sort of change and then we create the CN again and we process it. So all that sort of stuff where we need written confirmation of that's what the email team is for. And um, it can also be used for requesting updates on orders and things like that as well. So it, it's no problem if you want to come to the email team for order updates or ring in. If, if that's an option for both. It shouldn't be used for the likes of requesting us to add notes into faults, updating air codes on faults and etc. things like that because they're much more time sensitive. All right. So we have a fault out in the field it's it's the best practice is to give us the information as fast as possible because there could be a technician on route or on site or trying to find a house or trying to find whatever he needs to find and and we have <clears throat> we have the wrong information for the customer they're not reachable or the air code is wrong on the fault or, or whatever the situation is so we need to get them out as fast as possible and that's where the that's where the call team come in all right so they're managed by mark Lynch. You should be calling into us for fault notes, as I said, reassigning faults, uh, confirming error keys. So we don't get that much anymore, but I just thought I'd mention it because if, if you're not sure about an error key, you know, some so it could be one and one A, for example, in a housing estate, and you're not sure which one to pick. If you ring us, if you ring us with an error key, we can confirm if it's the if it's the, the right error key for the premises or not on the phone to you. And um, we don't see it too much anymore, but it is something that used to be done a lot. It might stop you having to place an LE, save an order. You know, it might be faster to pick up the phone and ring. Just, just an option. Um, things like that. All right. So the false, that's what the false team is for. It shouldn't be used for pre-call requests. Uh, confirming information needed for some order types. Again, like the CN that I used as an example, we need written requests for some things. Um, requests for updates on failed EEs can be handled on calls all right so if for example you're ringing and looking for an update on a failed EE now not an FT okay so the difference between an FT and an FA uh, for those of you who weren't on the call yesterday an FP and an FA you can see the updates on UG you can reschedule them all this sort of lovely stuff but for a net for a failed EE um, where we've issued on behalf of the operator um, you can't get updates so you need to ring us for the updates or ask us to reassign it ask us to send it back out if that is the case and that needs to be done, we'll create a case and let you know when that's out in the field. <clears throat> um, call team are also the lads who actually screen all your faults. So any faults that you're ringing about, um, the chances are they've seen it already. So if you're querying a reject, querying what the notes mean, we would have put them notes on more often than not if it's, if it, if it's referred back as on and four, okay? Um, whether it's referred back as on and four or, or zero, zero, one or whatever the referral code is, um my lads are fairly skilled so they will help you so if you aren't sure about the notes or aren't sure what we're looking for pick up the phone give them a buzz and they will uh help you out with that as well 
you should never be calling the OECC about a fault that has an active parent fault on a dashboard, all right? That's always, always refer to a dashboard about that. So say, for example, there's a, a 200 pair damage, you know, from a, a tree that came down or whatever the situation is, um, that's, that goes up on a dashboard generally. And it will have a number range there. We have contacts in our operators who ask for the number ranges we give them. And we also supply the number ranges on the dashboard too. Um, all updates for non for, for for bigger faults like that will be available in the dashboard. And if it's a massive outage, we send out updates from the open air service updates email. Uh, it just so a few of us in wholesale have access to that, and we send out updates if it's if it's a big concern, you know, with the P zero like well, like last week for example, or if there's if there's massive issues in one part of one part of the country or one type of service. Um, there's also two other teams in the OECC that don't get much of a mention on these graphs and charts and stuff ever. But they are there, and they're a big part of it. They're GMP and manual tasks, all right? So they're managed by Alan McGowan there in the bottom right. <clears throat> the manual task team handles, as I said earlier on, every single wholesale order that goes out to the field, all right? So every single order that's placed on the UG that falls out from manual processing. So this could be anything. It could be fixing a line. It could be it could be updating a bit of this inventory system, whatever the situation is. But it could also be, and regularly, it, you know, the reordering of a, of, a, of one thousand or five thousand lines of the PRA and, and things like that, very you know complicated, complex orders, and they handle actually around twenty thousand of these orders every single month. So, um, it's a lot, and uh, they start to sit in the background and keep the place ticking over. Well, so any any updates, any email cases, sorry, if you if your orders are recorded, for example, in your email, the OECC, the chances are the email team have asked the manual task team to have a look at that, um. And they will get it through the line, over the line for you. Uh, and we also have uh, the GMP lads. Um, they manage all the port and also network. So again, managed by Alan. Uh, GMP means geographic number porting, and a lot of numbers of you can you can imagine. So if I, uh, for example, if I want to leave and go to Virgin and take my number with me, I'm entitled to it, like I am with any number. We port them numbers numbers in and off the Aircom network as well for operators all the time, hundreds and hundreds of those a week, and um, that's what they do. And lastly, we handle uh, Ethernet and NGN faults as well. So core network faults, this is option two down the bottom there in, 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 on the IVR. Uh, core transmission faults, interconnects, voice traffic, all that sort of stuff, we handle all of those as well. So if there's, if there's, if there's issues or um, any major customer circuits that are core or interconnect circuits, we handle them as well and we deal with the operator. And um, depending on the operator you are on this call, you might or might not be dealing with them. So just moving on, uh, this is the escalation matrix, sorry. So as I said, OECC, always first point of contact, level one, uh, which will be uh, Alan and Mark. Depending on what the issue is, as I said previously, Alan deals with the manual task, the GMP, that sort of stuff. Mark deals with the, deals with the, um, deals with the fault and the calls team and all that sort of, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you go to them, all right. If your phone numbers are there, they're always reachable. You can get them. They're really, really helpful. They're always there to help. They rather if you ring them than come in with them. Or they rather if you ring you and do rather if you ring and do something right rather than try something and do it wrong if you're not sure, you know. So the phone's always there. We're not going to buy. Um, and again, Mark Folger is the uh, escalation manager, but he also handles, handles email teams for any updates and cases that you're not getting or whatever. Um, that's uh. That's uh, you go to him, all right, and he also handles level two escalations for me, and um, so that's to do with quality and quality issues, you know, like a builder, a builder smash brick on a on a, on a delivery, things like that. And then sensitive issues, you know, so for example, say things that you don't, you're not really comfortable with ringing in or emailing in about, um, you come you come to level two escalations because, um, there's some things obviously that you can't say over the phone. I don't, that you don't want to say over the phone, whether it's personal information, whether it's something sensitive about somebody, or whether it's an actual bigger issue, you know, like it doesn't have to do with the install, and it has to do with the, the, the tone of the voice of the technician, for example, all that sort of stuff that comes in through level two escalations. Um, and obviously, always are also coming through level two escalations is your rise and safe. So, any updates um, for rise and safe? Uh, that you don't get after, you know, if they're not do, if rise isn't done after a day and if safe isn't done after two days, come into level two um, and we update you there, all right? And level three is myself. Um, so bigger outages, you know, I deal with bigger outages, engagement, I engage with the SMC, NMC for those transmission files I said earlier on. Um, 
and I jump into like the war room and things like that and, and conference bridges when there's when there's faults on, on operator networks or on our networks. But again, uh people the phone ring me. I'm always there. Most of you know me anyway. Uh I'm always available. Well, for any reason that was the um, and a level four is your CSM uh, or SSM, depend on the operator. I left that blank because obviously depend on the amount, with the amount of operators on this call here, you, you have a different CSM or, or, or SSM. So, so you know, things like non-standard orders, as I said, non-standard faults, uh, UG shared access, all that sort of stuff. Um, that's your, your, your CSM. Or if you haven't got either of those, so if you're, and you're looking for, say, for example, UG shared, your account manager covers that array. Um, and then Paola at level four and Stuart at level five, you might never need to contact them. Hopefully not. But um, Paola is the is the service team manager, so she is over the customer success managers. Um, and and so so, um, she's their team manager. And then Stuart is Paola and, and my manager, so it means Paola reporting to Stuart. And um, moving on. Um, so AI. Um, I hope you can hear my doorbell ringing. Sorry. AI, <laughs> what is it? So AI is a digest interface tool which is available in the UG GUI. They can be used for finding an RT, finding an air code, finding a serving exchange. Now you might or might not ever need to use that, but it's handy to have if you want it. Um, and it's also used for, it can be used for finding an active CLI or CRN address belonging to an operator. So say for example, um, I'm in operator A and I log on to AI and I'm trying an address and I want to see what's going on at the address. I can actually see in AI web the, the phone number that belongs to that, to that, to that address. I'm just going to show you now in more detail. It's pretty straightforward stuff, but um, so how to find an ARD uh, using AI? All right, this is when you know the air code. It's very simple. It's really hard to see. Actually, I thought I made that clearer. But uh, uh, so how to, so all you do is you go to information orders on the UG, and then click on address search, and hopefully, hopefully that's clear for you. Uh, and then and then all you do is. Once you're in, you put popped up, this window gets popped up, you present it, you're presented with it, and it's very straightforward, as you expect, in the air code field, you, you throw in the air code there. And um, there has to be a space in it. Um, and likewise, when you're doing QBs, you need to include the space, all right? It's just recommended. Um, and then our system's take them out in the background and I put them back in, but it's recommended to use the space. So once you throw the air code in anyway, hit search at uh, the top left corner there, and you'll be given, you, you, this window here on the left hand side will pop up. And um, you can see important bits of information on this. So you can see here the address of the maintaining the exchange area. So that's, that's BRN. So that stands BRN is by Brigham Exchange. And you can see that also again on the bottom. You can see the LI that this customer is on. You know, you can, in the top right corner there, it's just where I was saying, so if I had that line, see where it says name and telephone number and the action date, things like that, it would be visible to you. So if, for example, I'm a Vodafone and I log in and this is a Vodafone customer, I just suggest I'll be able to see that information there. Um, the rest of the stuff you don't need to worry about. Uh, it's, it's, it's just soft, all tone, different bits of directory information. The main thing you're looking for, obviously, is the R key. So just tap on return there on the right, on the left hand side. Um, and you'll be given the R key, it'll pop out there on the, on the right there, you'll be given that. So that's grand. It's all handy dandy when you have the when you have the air code or the customer knows the air code. What if it's what if you don't know the air code? It's a little, it's a little bit messier, and I actually prefer using it this way anyway, um, because it's much easier. You can get a, a much more detailed information for the for the street and things like that. Um, so again, once you're inside inside AI, um, you present it with this window here. Um, you simply just throw the 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 long address in down the bottom there. Just some, before I move on, I didn't put it in the slides, but if you have telephone number, uh, if you know the telephone number, you can search it as well if you know it and in, in the middle section there. Uh, it's hit or miss, to be honest with you, I, would, I don't recommend using it. The address is always better, you know, and if you actually know this customer is here and or they're, they were there or whatever, because you can search for previous or existing, uh, existing phone numbers. Anyway, the long address there. Uh, and you can see there the address. We'll just go back a tiny bit. Um, you can see that I didn't see it's one St. George's Square, uh, Babrigan. All right, but I left out one on purpose on this on this on this deck because you know what if the customer doesn't you know what if it's you know the hook or you know the cottage, Babrigan. You don't know it could be anywhere in Babrigan, you know. So so you can actually widen your search, and I recommend that you widen your search. So in this case. For this example, I left out the number one. So obviously, you you want to see what's in St George's Square in Dublin. So you can do that, 
And you also don't actually have to use Dublin either. Um, you can use, the best way to describe it is if a car reg plate. So you can use D, you could use WD for Waterford, you could use, you know, LK for Limerick, whatever it is, CK for Cork, C for Cork, you can use as well. And um, depending on where you are, it's just, it might not make a much of a difference, but there's all sorts of short codes as well. If you want afterwards, I can send you those list of, list of uh, short codes. And also there's a little GT, you can do things like search and use an ampersand to get a wider view and things like that. I'll, I'll explain that to you. I have, I have a separate cheat sheet that I can send on about that too. Um, anyway, sorry. So yeah, once you type in the address and hit search, instead of being presented immediately with the with the window for the address, you're given the street, um, you're given the street or if you can, can find it, all right? So again, if they can't find it, maybe go back and take out, take it, try it again, but take out ST because it could be in the system as S-A-I-N-T, you know, things like that, you will find it. Everything is there. Every street is there. So please do search. Um, so again, so anyway, here, so we got we got the St. George's Square anyway, Bob Brigham. Uh, and you can see there the list of premises, the air codes, uh, things like that. And you can see there, you know, the line numbers, you know, active, yes or no, that sort of stuff. Um, but we're uh, we're looking for uh, number one, obviously, so you can see it there anyway on the screen, right? So, um, so we found number one. Uh, all you do is, is double click it um, you can use the scroll bar on the right hand side uh, and then you can see where the left hand on the, the, the left hand green thing is there that you can uh, you can fill in the address but if, if for example you got to get another page there's a button up the top that says more and um, so say there's 500 numbers on it 500 premises on the street just hit more and more and more you know until you get to roughly where the number is that you want to go it's in numerical order and um, so you should find it fairly quickly uh, yes again Double click it, you get back into the same screen you were in before, and happy days, you found, you found the R key there. So there are the two most common ways of finding R keys. There is an issue sometimes of finding R keys uh, with your code. Uh, if you can find the R key with your code, please do use the long address if you can. It will save you placing an LE, as I can say here. So, so in summary, so an R key, the best way to describe what an R key is, it's like a DNA for, for our premises already. It has, it has it has a lot of indexation tied to it. It has bits and pieces of, of information tied to it that, that network that lets an inventory network and network guys know what can be done and what lets us know what they can pre qual for, all that sort of stuff. It's very important. And um, obviously, our keys are up before air codes, so we're moving to air codes now, but that's what it was. So, back in the day when there was no such thing as air codes, every premises has an air key, simple as that. They're all unique, like you know, it, the lines in your hand, you know. Uh, if an air, so that's if an air code isn't known, uh, this is the easiest and quickest way to return an ARD without the need for an LE. All right, it, it does save you time. LEs can go to invalidations, they can go to recorders, they don't always go complete, things like that. Um, and you can find the other information as well, as I said, like the CRN, the CLI, and uh, the exchange information. So moving on to prequel. Um, sorry. Now that you have your, now that you have your, uh, your lovely R key, and um, you're ready to check what services a customer can get. All right, so depending on your customer's needs, they could want DSL, VDSL, a forward at home. You know, you could have an elderly customer there who just needs a panic, just has a panic alarm, just needs DSL for, for example. She doesn't need, you know, a forward at home connection that's sucking more power off the grid than lights up the, the street to planes land. You know, all you need is they just need basic stuff. So even though you can offer them forward at home, it doesn't necessarily mean they need or want it. Um, so that's what the, that's where the QB comes in, okay? So QB is called a pre-qual bit stream order and it's placed on the UG. And um, so, so the QB order is in the information tab, similar to the address search on, on the on the, the UG, all right? Well, it's in the same section, uh, information and pre-qual bit stream. Click on that. Um, to place the QB, you need the ARG, which obviously you have, uh, the air code or the active CLI, all right? So I'm going to, just going to talk about these as well now. So obviously you can see the information there, air code section, address ID, which is the air key, or phone number. We really recommend, if you can, to use, oh, I'm sorry, egress group there, depending on what you operate, you, are, you, you might or might not have access to egress group. That depends on whether you're going to be getting a Villa service, BSP service, and I'm, and I'm not talking about the main and stuff, um, but that's there as well, just so you know. Um, so uh, yeah, so the difference between the CL, so, so we recommend if you can to get the phone number off the customer. All right, this is this is the most accurate way you will get a pre-qual result if you can pre-qual a phone number because the phone number is there, it's working, 
it's in service. All the annexation is there. The path is built. We can we can essentially the UG will ping it to see what it can get. Everything is there in place, and it's the easiest way to get an accurate result. If you haven't got the phone number, the second best option is is the air code because that most likely is tied to the phone number in the background on our network or in our systems anyway, and that will also show up with your home and things like that. The least accurate is actually the air key. So the reason behind that is because, say for example, I may have been to a new a new house there or an and these dogs, the housing estate is built there the last couple of years and there's a DP on the side of the road. That DP number number one house number one could be 10 feet from the dp but house number 40 could be could be 100 feet from the dp and that makes a big difference when you're getting the likes of vdsl where where noise and things like that cause drop off you know so if there's no active lines in that part of state but the, the but the but the dp is ready for use it could be number 40 and they could go out and i could be expecting 100 megs and depending if you know it could be only getting 50 by the time the actual the actual job goes out so so our key is our best effort um, and that's all we recommend using the line because that's obviously already in the premises already there we just basically copying what the customer currently has and saying on the LA that the customer can get or on the Kiwi to the customer can get this um so yeah again using this this, this is the same premises you get a lot of attention this fella so he's, he's so again air code you have that uh i use the air code instead of the air key for for this uh for this example but you, again you could use the air key it's all one it's much of muchness um because we went and found it off ai so again, pop it into your code field, and then uh, you get your results. All right. So next is going to be just understand. So understanding your results. So um, there's different different reasons, different statuses and orders uh, about, about QE results and things with that line or no and all this lovely stuff. And I'll go through them. But uh, firstly, we'll go over a good example of a, of a result. All right. So once your QB is completed, you see a list of service codes. Um, so service codes are important here. They're not UG order codes. So every UG service that we offer has a UG code, and then every branch of that service has a service code. So say for example, I qualify for DSL. I can get up to 24 megs ADSL two. Well, I don't want 24 megs. So we offer, you know, a 12 megs, 14 megs, whatever, 18 megs, things like that. They're service codes of the of the service itself. And I'll show you the difference with them in the next screen in a minute. Um, all right, there's two screens out. No, it's next screen actually. Anyway, so each service code reflects a different product or variation of the same product. Not all products are available to all customers, and not all services are available to, are available to all operators. All right, so it's important to know that. So you 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 know some operators only sell DSL, some operators only sell probably to the home, some operators only sell probably to the cab. So next thing I'm going to show you is everything. But depending on what you sell, you might or might or might not see any of these uh, results on your prequel. All right. So these are the service codes, um, and I have them circled there for different types of services. All right. So so the top left there, BEA. That's that's a that's a DSL symmetrical service. They're not used anymore, but uh, it is still offered in the catalog. So I threw it in. Second one under that, uh, for the cab is obviously our motor, a big seller that for the home already. Right? So that's BSP, uh, that's BSP for the cab. So basically, if you're white label, or if you're not handing off onto your own interconnect uh, via VUA, that's what you be getting already. Right? You need to have a BPU and the exchange and things like that to have for the cab BSP. Underneath that is um, for the cab BEA. This is a this is a virtual Ethernet access service. There's only a handful of operators. Uh, I can count them on hand that use this type of service. It's a heightened. It's basically an enhanced class of service. Service. Uh, it's an enhanced class of service circuit. Uh, but it's just VDSL. So instead of say for example John Smith down the road, is next door to, you know, the dog grooming service and the dog grooming service say we're more important. You know, we need it. We need to dedicate it. We need to guarantee people can get onto our website. The, that's where the, the VEA comes in. It's it's more it's, it gives you guaranteed traffic or more important traffic over the guy next door who might not be using it as much, you know. Again, and then probably the cab via Vua, uh depends on the operator again, um uh Vua services, okay. So that's that's local handoff from the exchange onto the operating network. It's not transiting across our network. Um it goes onto a V you need a VAU circuit and it goes across the wheel. Anyway. Uh, top right corner there is forward to the home. We all know what that is, and you can see the amount of services depending on what the customer wants and, and things like that. You know, 500 megs up or 500 megs down, 50 megs up, you know, fixed rate, all this sort of stuff. That's all there for TV and all that. 
that's where the so many service codes. And the bottom right is DSL. All right, nothing need to, not, we don't need to say much more, more, more about DSL there. Uh, that, that, this example I was looking at there, this, is, this example is actually for ADSL too, all right, because you can see you can get up to 70 megs and things like that. If it was ADSL one, well, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get that. Um, we do see failures, okay? So the last previous example is all the good, that, that, they're all the, the examples of where, you, okay, you can get this or get that. But sometimes you see this type of failure here, um, where it says service date 31st of 12th, 2099. That's not actually a failure. It's not saying that they can't get the service ever. Uh, that just means that there's no space in the in the cab or the DP that the customers are going to be fed off. So this is common, all right. So it's, it, it, cabs have cabs only cabs only have so many cards. Cards only have so many slots. Slots get damaged. Slots get faulty. You know, people housing the population grows. Cabs get full. So that's what this is. Um, if you see this on a QB, um, there's not much you can do. All right, it, 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 but it, sometimes orders, sometimes separately orders can get through the system, PNNs or whatever, or whatever order type. And once that gets through, if there's no parts available, we stall the order. Um, but going forward in the next couple of weeks, those orders that are there, which every operator has, um, they'll be on the workbook. All right, so you'll be able to see those orders, and we we'll be able to give you a part update or updates on your workbook. Um, but say if it's okay, but for the QB. Again, as I said, so no parts available for the relevant service on the nearby cab or DP. The order cannot proceed any further, so and then it will stall. All right. So, um, say for example, I live next door to I live, I live next door to someone, and I see them moving out and going to the Bahamas. So as they grant grant their season their service, um, I can use their port tomorrow. Doesn't work like that. Similar similar to the way to the way number system works. I'm entitled to have that number for 30 months on the number and a phone number. But with a fiber port, I'm entitled to have that for 21 days, not 21 calendar days. So um, after 21 days, if that port isn't, hasn't been reused by that customer who decided to leave and come back from his Bahamas holiday, um, then I can use it. All right. So you might sometimes see that. Uh, there's nothing we can do. It's Comreg. That's the way it works. Everyone's entitled to get their service back. It's basically like a, it's basically like a kill and off period after the service is ceased. Um, uh, another common failure is uh, line unknown. All right, so um, this can be for various reasons. You know, tons of reasons. You need to contact us to fix that. All right, but before you do, uh, this brings me on to the next thing about what you need to check before coming to us and things like that. Um, but yeah, line unknown is nothing to do with your operators. Not not an issue with how the LE was placed or how how the QB was placed. Things like that. Um, it's just the fact that the service. Uh, the indexation is wrong or it could be anything on the back end and stuff like that and we look at them uh, so again as I before I say it, you know you come to the email team for that all right don't we don't be, don't be requesting updates on prequel or don't be requesting don't be requesting us to do prequel over the phone because it's not an easy thing to do it takes time and that is why we need a particular template we need this information off you and so before all that before you come to us you know Check if they're an active line at the premises. You know, if 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 it's a new customer and you say to them, you know, oh, is there a phone there? You know, if, yeah, is there a phone? Talk it there, plug it in. You know, read re read it back. See if you can get a phone number. If they have happy days, you can pre-call that to see what you can get back. If not, which is understandable, obviously, if it's someone, especially someone moving into a new house, um, you don't have that. Just coming to us. Uh, you need to make sure that you're not pre-calling voice over IP. So you you can't pre-call a logical service. So if you were, for example, if someone gave you an old one number and saying, can I get broadband? You don't know in theory whether this is VoIP or, 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 or not, all right? So you should ask them, where is your phone line plugged into? If they say it's plugged into the modem, you can't pre-call that, all right? Because it's a logical service. What you need to do pre-call in there is the access service, the 881 number, 882 number, 883 number, whatever it is, whatever it is pre-call that. Do not pre-call or send us pre-call requests. With voice over IP numbers in them because they'll be rejected on the spot. Um, another thing is, you know, if someone does get a line, say for say for example, uh, I, I, I place an order for somebody um, in LNN, for example, it goes into service and they immediately want to put broadband on it with a PPN or whatever order type, all right? And it doesn't work. The line has to be working in situ on the network for four to five working days before it updates the full network image and the path and things like that. It will pre-qual after that. If it doesn't after that, then that's okay. But if the line is in the service for five working days, don't come to us. And um, again, 
it's it's it takes time to update. Um, and there's a couple of videos. I I left a few links there, three links. Um, just to map the first one is our own one. Uh, mostly obviously everyone knows it. Uh, it's all very straightforward. How to use maps? You can you can check things like the distance to the cab, all that sort of stuff. So it'll say where you can get further to the cab or further to home and things like that. Um, second one is is the government web is the government one. Alright, so. The government map it will give you a good indicator whether a customer is in scope for something off the open air network or whether they might fall into you know broadband plan or the MBI network network. Um, I have a screenshot of that in a couple of slides. It's just handy to have because you can tell them up front. Then you know you know they always you know you won't be getting service here. You can handle the customer better rather than rather than wasting their time in a way sending them on a wild goose chase looking for prequel updates and things like that, and that they might never get the service. You know. And then uh, the last link there, the GeoHive map checker as well. That's just another option as well, yeah. Um, if you have the active service and you're trying to upgrade the customer, so say for example, someone's on DSL, but you know they can get further to the cab because the next door neighbor, your man that went to the Bahamas, suddenly he's on further to the cab. Uh, you know, but your customer can't get it when you run a QE. There could be a fault on the line. You should check, you could run an FTL, see what's going on because, because um, if, there is a fault on the line, it can really, really impact the result in a QB, all right, because it's a live, it's a live, it's a live test, a QB, so it will see, it will see the fault, it will see the switch in the working pair that sends it, and that working pair is 100 yards up the road, it will impact the, the service quality, or the service, the service estimation, um, just worth knowing, all right, and then, uh, you need, and then you need, this is, we see this a lot, okay, we got, we, we got hundreds of pre-qual requests a week, um, but if there's no QB placed or attempted, we're not going to assist you. So yeah, we, you can't you can't come to us and, and say to us, can you update this prequel with no with, with no testing done yourself? Show us what you're doing, things like that. Prove to us. You need it's, it's you know we're not proved, but like, say say to us, you believe this customer should get X, Y, and Z. I tried to run a QB, it didn't work. Why is this? We'll answer your question, but and this is why um we need a template. So just before I move on to the template, here's a. The maps, so that's our own map, and um, you can type in the error code here, whatever you want your address in, to find the address or place it there, and it'll tell you what you get. Very straightforward. Um, uh, very straightforward tells you a pretty quick, exact, quick, quick checker for what you can get, you know, and any customers, have, any, any customers have, access, have access to this as well, so you can also refer people to that, no problem. Here's the government map, the government map, the yellowy, ambery color there. Um, so if I, if I type in the error code, and I'm sitting in in Bally Bally Orban there on the top left corner. I'm not getting I'm not getting broadband. You know, I, 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 you can see it there. It's in, it's clearly in the national broadband plan. Sometimes you see little cells, see little circular cells of orange or yellow inside the blue cells. Maybe put, maybe sometimes we can get service there for them. You know, that's a grey area. And come to us and we can try and look at them for you. But for the ones that are way out in the in the sticks. That are not covered by the broadband plan or, or by by air, by open air referring to the broadband national broadband plan, and if they're in the blue area, they should be getting it more or less. You know, nearly every situation they should be getting it. Whether it's over the home or over the cab or once it's over thirty megs. So the way this works is any there any any customer there in that blue area should be getting thirty megs or so, which is basically uh, ADSL two, which is twenty four megs plus. This is a template I was mentioning. Most of you know it. Um, so if you believe a customer should be available of a service but prequel fails, uh, the blow template needs to be populated and sent to us. The more information you can give us, the better. It does help us, you know, for example, if you can give us next door's phone number, even or next door's air, air key, next door's air code, and you can say, look, this customer next door has 100 megs, my customer, I can't upgrade them to, to, to more than ADSL2, you know, what's going on. If you have that information, do share it. It does help us because we will essentially mimic the indexation on on custom on the customer that has a good service and we can tweak the R key that you sent us uh to get it to mimic to get it to mimic what the customer has next door to them. That's that's why we need more information. Sometimes sometimes you can't give that if the house is on its own in the middle of nowhere. We understand that. You know, that's fine. Um but we do where possible uh give us more information if we can. Um, bear in mind though, once we do update a prequel, it can take, similar to the way the LNN I told you about when that goes into service, it can take up to four working days to go uh, to get an accurate prequel result. Okay, that's not us slowing things down. That's the network inventory updating. It can take four days to update. There's a three or four different systems that 
where the IP is housed, it can take time to update. All right, one one day, next one next day, three days, the poles down the systems like that, um, day by day. So by the time it gets to day four, you know, it should be pre qualified and you can go on to whatever whatever service provider service provider's website you want. And if their website is working correctly in line with the pre UG pre qual, um, it will give you a good example of what you can get. And um, again, as I said already, we don't have enough information. We we can't action the request already. So we're not placing the QB and things like that. We we won't we won't action it. Um, so pre qualifying for MBI, okay. So this is relevant to some, not relevant to others on this call. Um, but uh, it is a service we offer, so I will talk about it. All right. So so pre qualifying for an, an air call for MBI services is called an eligibility check. Um, even though you place a QB at the moment, that's all going to be changing. But at the moment, it is called an eligibility check. All right. Um, if an air code is part of the national broadband rollout, as you see in that yellow and blue screen back there, and it may qualify for an MBI service. Um, you can still pre qualify an air code. If it qualifies, it will show on the QB. All right. So it will have a different specific service code for MBI, which I'll show you now. Um, at the moment, uh, the uh, order type is the PNN, all right. So you can't at the moment. There's, real, there's rules and regulations, and 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 MBI is only coming into coming into flight full full swing now. So uh, transfers and things like that aren't yet possible. The main thing you're looking for is the PNN, and you can see as well. Um, all of these orders are actually manual. So every single PNN order that's issued, or every single MBI order that's, that's requested by one of our RSPs, um, they're all fully manual. We do every single bit of it, every single step of the way, including the MBI piece until delivery. So, um, these can take time. Uh, they're going out well, as you know. But uh, yeah, bear that in mind. Uh, and obviously, you know the contacts, the people that are the, the, the resellers that are selling MBI for us from us know the contacts uh, who've come to with those as well. Um, my I'm one of them, and then I have another couple of people there as well, which is all now. Um. If an air code doesn't qualify, the OECC template does not apply, okay? So you cannot come to and ask OECC to update prequal on the MBI, on, on customer qualify for MBI. It's not our network. We get this a lot. It's not our network. If the customer doesn't qualify, then you go to MBI. All right, unless there's an, unless there's an issue with the, with the, with the, with the upload file, the, 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 the key file that we get off MBI, that's a different situation altogether. But if the customer does not qualify, and they think they should, they need to go to MBI, or you need to go to MBI for them. It's not our network. Our systems are turn results off the MBI network. It's as simple as that. Don't come to us with them. We see them a lot, and um, we try to shut them down. Um, so how to prequal? So the database is uh, qualified, as I said, it's updated regularly. Every It's every month, every second month, actually. It's updated uh, and passed up. And then once it's, once it's loaded into the API, it's like a, it's an APQ file, once it's loaded, um, your customer will immediately qualify. All right. So, uh, as an MBI area uh, activates, uh, Open Air actually wor we work in tandem. We build in the connect out into the chambers that MBI where the MBI network terminates, and we meet the network there. We splice onto it, and we do that in tandem with them. So usually we're working together as much as we can to get things up so that there's no delay in in ready time on the MBI network versus order time on the Open Air network. Uh, your code needs to be checked on the MBI map for just just to be sure. You know, if 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 for example there is an issue where where our internet connect isn't ready, for example, and you place an you check the MBI website and it prequels or if it says okay you can get it here but you can't place an order, come to us for that and we give you an update on what the story is with the interconnect and things like that. Um, if an air code qualifies on the MBI website, it should also prequal on the UG. Very straightforward. Uh, if there are there are two speeds at the moment, 500 megs and a gig, that's going to be changing. Uh, if not, if not already, I've done this. I've done this slide a couple of months ago, and with, they will be offering two gigs as well. Uh, there are via the PNN, and as I said, it's fully it's a fully interim solution until the integration project is complete. Uh, OECC handle that. That's the MBI website. Free for storage. The big tick there says Grant, happy days I can get it, and the big X tells me to go home with me tail between my legs. I can't get it. Uh, this, these are the service codes. Um, you'll see that on the QB, all right? So if you see SHN B1GC or B5MC, this is MBI. Um, the customer qualified for it. And you can see this is a good example I took a screenshot of because you can see it. The customer doesn't qualify for the cab, doesn't qualify for the home office. Uh, he only qualifies for Formex DSL. But 
you can get an MBI service. So that's a good example of, of what you should be watching for, you know. Um, okay, so that's that's essentially it on on uh, QEs, prequels, that sort of stuff. Any questions on that, let me know. Uh, I know it was it's sort of like a high-level view, right? but you, you should be able to use AI now and do things like that. Uh, we're on 45 minutes now, so I'm just going to go quickly through the new tenant process and the credit management process. This is a bit, as I said, this is a bit text heavy. Uh, this is a bit text heavy. Um, and just, just bear with me, it's the only way this can be done, all right? So just, just about rules and regulations around the new tenant process. We get a lot of these questions, you know, how do I see the service when it belongs to, you know, when I move someone in and there's an old service there, this sort of stuff. That happens a lot. We get a lot of requests and similar with credit management as well. There's a couple of things there, but we, it's important to know that we get a lot of escalations for these. Yeah, I was like, yeah, we will be giving it a deck afterwards. Yeah. And it'll also be going up onto the YouTube channel and um, I'll split it into two. I'll split it into, I'll split it into AI and prequal and the new tenant process and credit management as well. No matter. Um, so where was I? Um, yeah, so, so it's important to know that we rely on you, the operator, to work with us on the new tenant process, okay? So we get a lot of requests to say this new tenant process isn't done, that one isn't done, why was this not that, that done? We rely on you. So if, for example, I'm going to use just Vodafone and BT, for example, here now, just not just two random operators. If we're going to BT to see the service, or we're going to Vodafone to see the service on behalf of an end customer, we need this we need just to cease it because if, if if we're working together it gets done faster all right and this is why uh this is so just it's important to know that um but what is it anyway so a new tenant process is a comrade process uh yeah that, that's fine um any questions um your name is in a schedule and but any questions afterwards or anything just let me know Um, you know my email address anyway and um, so what is it? A uh, new tenant process is a comeback process where OIOs can request services at a premises to be ceased that do not belong to that operator when there is a new occupier at the at the address. So, you know, when the customer wants a PSTN service, DS service, post based VDSL, standalone uh standalone VDSL or a fabric at home service, they can request this off you, all right? But like how do you know? How do you how do you check for it? The most important thing, the easy most the obvious option is just ask the customer if, there, if there's anything there is there an ntu throw a phone into it to see if it works if it doesn't work you know you'll, you'll be okay and um, place an nle order all right this is the easiest and best way to find active parts at a premises and i do recommend using it the nle isn't used enough some operators use it some operators don't seem to use it Um, it's important the good order type it gives you a lot of information about institute parts, how many patches on an R key, all that sort of good stuff. And it also tells you if there are active services at an address. Um, and what's really important to note is check if the current service belongs to you. It, like we reject 40% of NTP requests because the service belongs to the operator that's requesting to seek the service. It's it's a really it's a big thorn on my side, to be honest with you, because NTP is not an easy process. So check to see before you're ceasing, before you're asking us to see services that the service doesn't belong to you, um, because because we reject the request, we shouldn't even be responding to it. To be honest with you, it should be something that you should be doing. As I said, you can even see it in AI, you know. Um, so placing an NLE, all right. So you can see, so NLE are on the NJ orders tab. Uh, go to NJ orders. Uh, obviously you need the RT, yeah. So sorry, before you go on, you need. To Go back and the you know that you're a pro on, on AI, you can go back and you can find the R key from there. Get the R key and um, pop it into NLE or NJ artist then NLE, all right. Um if you present it with this window, you can show the R key in there. I done this last night. And um, press submit, it'll generate an order reference. All right. The order will go complete. Um and you will see here as an example, um you can see active, this one doesn't have one, but active paths, you know, active paths with NTU, zero, you know, down further down, you can see spare paths with no, with no NTU, one, so that means there's no NTU in the premises, but there was a path into the premises. So the NLE gives you a lot of information, you know, it, it gives you a lot of information there that you might not, you, might, you might, not, might not think is available on it. That's on the details tab on if any, just so you know. There's good information there, uh, you'll be able to see if there's, a, if, if there's an ONT, 
able to see if there's a, an NTU, able to see if there's an active service, able to see if there's a powered on, powered on in ONT. So it's, it's a good it's a good order type, and you should be using it where you can. But even for your own active customers, if they say that their ONT isn't working, place an NLE. You can see if there's an active ONT on site. Um, if there is an active path, proceed with the new canning process. All right, come to us. It's email only, and it's important. Uh, we we don't. So it comes it comes to new tenant process at area.ie. We were interimly doing it uh, to the customer care website or customer care email address a couple of years ago. But please don't send them in there. We do see the odd one going in. It goes to this email address here. All right. You need to specify clearly that it's new tenant in new that NTP or new tenant process in the subject because again. I'll be touching on the, the credit management in a minute. It's only a couple of slides on, but that comes into this email just as well. So we need to differentiate. We need to know what the request is. You need to specify the art of the air code. Uh, you need to specify the new occupier's name. And you need to specify the address. They are requirements. All right, you can't, there's no, there's no specifying giving me the art key, but not giving me the address. Um, you need both, all right? Uh, if possible, uh, if you have a document to show that the customer is this new occupier at the address, happy days, that's great, give it to us. We can go back and we can request a CSA off you to lose an operator and it'll make things much easier. Um, uh, we operate this mailbox, as I said. For escalations, use the matrix. Again, same thing, uh, not a big deal. Uh, we deal with these all the time. Uh, come to us, come to me, come to anybody on my matrix, we will help you with the NTP mailbox. And um, if you're not getting a response or, you know, someone's taking a bit more, a bit longer or you have an empty customer. Um, once the service are ceased, we let you know. All right. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, the turnaround times. Okay. As I said, so at, at the top of this, at the top of this topic, I said, we rely on you. We do. We, we need engagement of operators. It needs to be better from operators. It, I guess this is one of the main reasons I'm glad this was questions were asked of this because it needs to improve. We need to see better engagement of operators. You need to respond when we're sending the request out. We get a lot of this, you know, we email out requesting operator A to see if they don't come back to us. So we take the service down, which we're entitled to do after so many days. If we do that, we sometimes get an email the next day off that operator saying, oh, my customer service isn't working and log a fault. The service is gone because you didn't come back to us. You didn't, you didn't veto it. So it's important for your customer that you come back to us, either veto it or action the request. It's important that you do it. If you don't do it, we will cease it without hesitation. This also leads to billing issues on the operator side. If you don't use the UG directly for all your orders and you have a feeder system that APIs into the UG, that system could be still billing. That's the honest is on you, the operator, to sort that out. We don't have to we don't we don't have to answer for that. It's a comrade process, sorry. Uh it can take up to thirty days. And, and the, the, the guidelines are 30 days for one particular service type. Generally, it's not that long, um, but that is the Comrade guidelines. So you should really be waiting until after that to escalate it into us, unless it's, as I said, you know, there's only, say, VDSL and nothing else at the premises. You don't really know you're blind to it. That's, that's our job, you know. Uh, losing up as a second veto the request if they can show that their customer is still the occupier. So, you know, me, Daniel, I'm still I'm living at a Jeff. One, two, three, and you know, airing me to, to see my broadband. And I tell them what you're talking about. I haven't even left my house in the pandemic in the last two years. I'm still here. They beat away. Um, the average turnaround time per service, okay. So, SPWLR, so it's the PSTN line. Uh, the average completion time is six days. Um, that's normal because it can take a couple of days for the UG and things like that to update. That's a very, the UG, at the end, like, the UG is a five day. SLA for CSIS anyway, so the extra one day is us sending the request to the operator to put that into perspective. SBWLR plus DSL or VDSL, 12 days. Again, you have to see the broadband before before you see the PSTN, so it adds time on. It can take time. Operator A might have the, might have the, the, the PSTN line. Operator B might have the broadband. You have to send two separate requests at two separate times in a different order to request to cease. So I can understand why this can take long and why we need engagement of operators. Um, stand on DSL, it's only one service, so six days. Stand on probably the tab, probably at home, six days. SBWLR plus, plus LLU, which is which is line sharing service. Okay, it's not too common anymore. That can take up to 30 days and there's multiple reasons for that. I'm not gonna go into it on the call. 
but that's why the SLA uh, from Conrad gets 30 days, sorry. We do aim to complete the request complete them as fast as possible. Sometimes we need more information. It's not just being awkward. That's just the way it has to be. If 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 operator A says no, my customer is still here, we might go to operator B and say the request has been vetoed, or, or you know, customer still the premises. You can come back to us and challenge that. By all means, we're there in the middle to help you. We're not there to just not place, not look after your order. Uh, we don't want to see things unnecessarily. We do it. We have to do it. It, it's part of the process. If you don't come to us and don't respond to us, we'll take your customer service down. And you, there's no other way of saying it. It's your responsibility to make sure that doesn't happen if the customer is still there. And we don't share information. Lastly, so if Operator Ray is saying to me, oh, there's a new a new guy at, 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 the, at the house. We don't share that, that person's name with Operator B. We just tell them what we have on record for the existing customer. They either say that they're there or not, see it or not. Simple as that. There's no one, and, and, and the same works back the other way. We don't tell operator A about what we have in the system for operator for B at the moment, you know. Very straightforward, but uh, it's important to know the SLAs on it. And again, any escalations you want to come to it, or come to me with them, come to the, my team with them, we help you with them. And um, they, they can be tedious, they can be big. Every single one of them is bespoke, every one of them is unique. You're relying on the end customer, relying on us, and relying on the other operator, you know, so it, it's important for new tenant process that people work together. And then finally, um, we're on 56 minutes here, so hopefully I'll keep this a nice crisp hour if I can. Uh, credit management, all right. So credit management is similar to new tenant process in a way, where but the difference is an operator who has a PFCN service, okay, requesting this is, is requesting the cessation of a broadband service in the case of bad debt. So so operator A has the PSDN, operator B has the has the broadband, but operator A isn't getting isn't getting any money off the customer for the phone line each month. Uh, they want the broadband ceased so that they can cease the PSDN service. That's essentially what this is. Um it happens a lot. A credit management request can only be made by the dual or service provider, not the broadband ISP. Okay. If you are, if you're the broadband provider, cease it yourself. You don't need to cease the, the phone line before you cease the broadband. Don't come to us with it. Uh, we also handle these on behalf of any operator. So we're not acting on behalf of Comrade here, we're acting on behalf of the operator requesting the cessation, all right? That's the difference between that and new tenant. Similarly to NTP, it goes to same email address via email. This, this, the subject must say CM request for credit management. The operator must be the FP dual R provider. The dual R service has to have TOS on the account, all right? Otherwise, we would reject the request. If TOS isn't on the account, don't come near us. Um, you have to have TOS against it. Why would we see the service that the customer is getting for free off you anyway? It's up to you to place to make sure the customer isn't getting the service, block it, and then come to us with the credit management, management request. I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, you, need, you need to clear name the customer uh, as exactly it is on open air records, and if anything is incorrect at all, your request will be blocked. Uh, how to place TOS, really straightforward, go to the boiler orders. Navigate to the, the Willow Orders tab and click on CM, which is a, a credit control of credit management or control of management of TOS. And um, click add on a drop down menu there where it says temporary office service in the bottom. Uh, put in the customer's UAM, press submit, job done, brand, then come to us with the request. Sorry. Uh, we make contact with the current broadband provider. The current broadband provider has five working days. All right. They have five working days to either absorb the customer or seize the broadband service. So if for example, operator B who have the broadband say they're still coming to us, still coming to us about the they're still paying our broadband bill, you know, it's not a big deal. And if that is the case, uh, take the customer, get, place a PMW order and, and take the customer's phone line down, but keep the broadband in service, whatever you want to do. Take the take both, place the P, place the PBW and take it. If you want to keep the it's the customer wants to keep their voice, that's grand. At the end of the day, operator A doesn't want the customer because they're not paying their bills, so they want to cease them anyway. So take them. That's an option as well on, on credit management. Or you can cease the broadband if you don't want the customer also. So you could have the same problem and you just have them followed up on cessation uh, or credit control, cease the broadband, and then we let, we let, we let operator A know that the broadband ceasing the leg takes the, the CL against the phone line. Um, it can take to have five working days. If not, we take it down. If no response, uh, and your double R oper op op operator is notified of the of the cease of the case. Uh, if OECC ceases the service again, as I said, the onus is on the losing operator to stop billing through their own billing system. We get a lot of requests where they say this customer is still billing, 
you know, why is this? And the reason is because we ceased it on your behalf and because you didn't respond to a new tenant request. That happens a lot. That's up to you. We don't give credits back for that, for things like that. Um, that's all. Uh, 69 minutes and 47 seconds. I'm proud of myself. I kept it only there. Uh, but um, as I said, thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to give you, uh, you can ask questions in the chat now or if you have any, I'm sure you, you might have a couple, you might not. If you don't, that's fine. I'm going to stop recording uh, now. And uh, as I said, as I said, this will all be going up onto our YouTube channel.